What is happening YouTube? Cowboy here and this ferocious combination of power and excellent armor fashion choice you see before you is my switch axe build. Now the switch axe is hands down my favorite weapon in Monster Hunter. There's, I don't know what it is about the switch axe. It's just so aggressive, so visceral. Everything about the switch axe screams, I'm here to beat the shit out of you. And I think that's why I like it so much. It's an incredibly satisfying weapon to play with. And in the right hands, it is incredibly devastating. Capable of putting out huge, huge amounts of DPS. So before we jump straight into the build, some Switch X basics I want to cover. If you want an in-depth look at Switch X combos, I'd suggest looking at Project Wars video. He does a really good job uh, going over some of the better combos with the Switch X. But basically, we're going to open with a Morph Slash and then go straight into an Element Discharge. This is going to be to charge up our sword mode. So you can see in the top left how we kind of have that glow around the sword. Now from here, you're going to go forward in circle to do a Slash. Do one circle, morph slash, and then from here it's just a circle, triple triangle, until it's time to blow our load. This is your basic combo, it's going to be circle, triple triangle. And ideally you want to do your elemental discharge coming out of a circle, because of the way frames work. Oh, look how satisfying that is. Um, so just to touch on what I just mentioned at the end there real fast about always trying to do your element discharge off of a circle. Uh, the most important thing is going to be to always try and do your discharge before that blue bar in the sword runs out. However, if you can do it at the end of a double slash, the frames end up flowing a little bit better. Just for comparison here, you can see how we kind of had to step back to do our discharge right there. If we do it with the double slash... See how we went straight into it? How like that step back was a little bit quicker? You know, it flows. It flows better. But anyway, let's take a look at the gear. There may be a more optimal setup for Switch X. Like I said, I'm not exactly a Monster Hunter veteran, but when it comes to making builds, I fancy myself pretty good at it. And this is a combination that I found to be incredibly effective. So we are running the Dying Light Switch Axe, and this is the one we get off of Nier Gigante. There may be a Switch Axe that's more powerful, but there sure as hell isn't one that looks as fantastic. This thing just looks alone. The stats could be terrible, and I would probably still use it, because god damn, that thing looks sexy. Moving on from there, we have the Challenger Charm, and this is going to give us two points in Agitator. We have the Dragon King Eye Patch. Let me get over to where we show the stats here. Uh, and that's going to be for the two points weakness exploit, the Nier Gigante Male Beta for the two points stamina surge. However, you'll probably want to use the Nier Gigante Male Alpha. I actually have an Agitator gem in this. Whereas the uh, Alpha already has Agitator, but the color scheme doesn't work. It forces the orange on the chest, and then your colors end up changing the spines. So from a fashion perspective, got to go with the Beta if you have the Agitator gem. Uh, moving on from there, we have the Nier Gigante Van Braces, which these are going to give us two points in Agitator and one point into Attack. The Nier Gigante Coil Beta, which is going to give us two points in Attack and a large gem slot. And then probably the most important part, the Kushala Cruz for the Greaves. And this is going to give us two points in Evade Extender. Now, the only real weakness the Switch X has, in my opinion, is its real lack of defensive options. Uh, it's really hard to keep up with enemies when they start running. And as for defense, all you really have is Evasion. And having the Kushala Cruz with, we actually have an Evade Extender gem in there, it turns us into an Evasion machine. So just to go through everything real fast here... Three points of Nier Gigante for Nier Gigante Hunger. Regenerates your health as you continually attack a monster. Recovery varies by weapon. Not completely necessary. The bonus isn't even that high. But it is just something that's kind of nice to have working into a build that doesn't really have much defense to begin with. Into the big stuff. Agitator level 5. Now, a lot of people had questions regarding when a monster is enraged. Uh, basically, any time a monster roars, it's usually going into an enraged state. You will have this up for like 80% of a battle. So, just static, basically 20 attack and 15% affinity. Freaking sexy. Moving on from there, attack boost level 3. Now, this is the main reason I haven't put this build up sooner. Is because I'm a dumbass, and the free attack gem we get from finishing the campaign, I lost it. I don't know what I did with it. 
I don't know if I sold it or I broke it down, but I lost it. But you really want to have that attack gem because that would put you at attack level 4. And the main thing about attack level 4 is that's the break point where we're going to get an extra 5% affinity. So if you have an attack gem, slot it in. Right now, instead of that, I have two health boost gems in, but you would want to put a attack gem in to achieve that level 4. Level 3 weakness, or weakness exploit. We have the two points coming in from the helm and the one point coming in from the gem. Level 3 evade extender. Two points from the Greaves, one point from the gem. Uh, health boost, which is just nice to have since we don't have that attack gem. Uh, I would actually suggest health boost be your main filler gems until you find the gems you really want. At least three of them because an extra 50 health is really nice. That's how much we get from eating a full fresh food buff from the canteen. Stamina Surge at level 2, which is just nice to have. It's not completely necessary, but given how uh, we do have an infinite combo in Circle and swinging our axe, this just helps to prolong that even longer. And then, of course, Evade Extender 3. So to go into the gem slots in particular and what we're running here, as I mentioned, we have two Vitality Gems right now just as fillers. Ideally, you would want to have an Attack Gem. Uh, moving on from there, you're going to want a Tenderizer Jewel to put into your Dragon King Eye Patch. This will allow you to achieve three points in Weakness Exploit on one piece of gear. The Nirgagante Mail, of course, as I mentioned, we have a Challenger Jewel in this, which makes it basically identical to the Nirgagante Mail Alpha, which has just a small gem slot and a point in Agitator. But from a fashion perspective, if you have the Agitator gem, you might as well use it because it looks so much better, at least in my opinion. Moving on from there, Nirgagante Van Braces, of course, we have no jewel, but we don't need it. Nirgagante Coil. Now, here, this is your one real uh, free gem slot to do whatever you want with. I decided to go with a point in maximum might, and the reason for that is you don't use any stamina while you're in sword mode. Now, uh, my issue is I used to run this build working uh, three points of maximum might, which obviously gives us 30% affinity in sword mode, which sounds really attractive. But as I played more and I considered it more, you know, more often than not, you end up switching to axe. And ideally, you want to maintain as much time in sword mode as possible. But you're rolling occasionally, you're going into axe mode. Sometimes you just got to sit in axe mode. And every time you're in axe mode, you're not really getting the benefit from maximum might because you're using your stamina. So instead, I ended up opting for having the agitator boosted. Alternatively, if you do prefer to have maximum might, you could just as easily switch to a Maximum Might Necklace instead of the Necklace, which is giving us uh, three points in Agitator, and that would keep your Maximum Might at that 30% affinity, so you would have 30 from that, you would have uh, 50 from this, and that would put you at just a baseline of 80% chance to critically hit when you're attacking weak points. Alternatively, my preference is going to be Agitator, which will give us 20 attack, 15% affinity, and then we have just 10 coming in from this. So that gives us 75% chance to critically hit when we're attacking the head, plus we have the extra 20 affinity. And then, of course, as I mentioned, the most important thing here is going to be Evade Extender. You can get away with level 2, however, I think level 3 is really nice. If you play with level 2 and you're comfortable with that, feel free to drop in another Mighty Jewel or something else. You know, put your affinity up even higher. But having Evade Distance level 3, I find to be almost sexual with how nice it is. And just to better show that, because I think it is really important to, to show just how potent uh, Evade Extender is. You know, if we take off our stuff right now, and the main thing is we use this to catch up to stuff when we're in, uh, in our mode. So going next to this barrel, wrong button here. Uh, from this barrel, you know, our regular roll, that's our roll in axe mode. So about four rolls to get past past this thing from that starting one. From sword mode, oh man, like look at that, it's so, and, and you know, if you've played Switch Axe, you know that feeling where you're like, this fucking monster, I don't want to switch out of sword mode, but it's running away. Now watch this with Evade Extender, okay? Watch this shit. Watch this shit. Oh, well, I moved the barrel, but anyway, it's like right here. Look at that shit! We're like, it's, it's like super rolling in Dark Souls. Even with the sword! Look how freaking far we go! How can you not love that? It makes Switch X so much better to play. Because you're just sitting there, and you're just like a boom, a boom, and you're like, whoop! Look at the sidesteps! Look at the sidesteps! They are huge. So anyway, Evade Extender 3 is bay. Just use it. It's gonna be fantastic. And now that we've gone through everything, let's jump in. Let's show you what this thing is capable of.
So, for our hunt, we are going for the big boy himself, Nier Gigante. Considering we're using an axe made from his skin, as well as a bunch of pieces of armor made from him, felt like it was only appropriate that we take him down. So, let's put on... We got our armor skin on, we got our demon drug on. We already ate at the canteen, so we got that delicious health buff up. Flash pods are on, max potions are on deck. Let's go take him out. Rocksteady is so tasty. Let's see if I can get a surprise. Oh! Surprise mount, bitch! One thing you'll notice I'm doing right here is instead of bracing against moves, just move. Because you can just, like, if, if the head, if he's going to slam his head into the ground, you can move into the back. Or vice versa, if he's going to swing the tail and move somewhere else. It's really easy to just move versus even bothering with a brace. And it's great to start a mount, or uh, with a switch axe in particular, because now we're going to get that element discharge up. So that while he's on the ground, we're going straight into sword mode, baby. You can hear what would be, uh, would be things bouncing off, but, like I said, mind's eye. Sorry, Nier Gigante. Those scales aren't gonna do shit to me. It's also important to note that I am, uh, fully augmented armor as well, so I'm probably a little bit beefier on the defense than most people that are running this build right now. But anyway, I mean, ideally, that's where you want to be end game. Oh, now see right there, that's less than ideal. If I deal, you always want to try and discharge because otherwise that's just downtime where you could be doing damage otherwise. Now we could go to sword mode right now, but our gauge is a little bit low. So we're just going to keep whacking away, let that sword gauge build up some. Oh. No more, uh... No more sexy time earplugs. Earplugs is one of those skills that I would love to have. But unfortunately, it's just it's too big of an investment to justify at five points. Tyler the Mantle. Oh, I messed it up. So as you're sliding down, one thing that's nice to do is if you are sliding, you can do a uh, right triangle to morph into sword and then come in with a triangle to do a downswing. So it's like a double attack out of a slide. Where do you think you're going? You're going nowhere. Where the fuck do you think you're going? Get your ass back here, nigga. God damn, you ain't running away from me. Beat the shit out of you, Charles. Get the fuck down. Man, just beat the shit. Beat him down all the way until yellow sharpness. God damn, near Gigante. Get Dookie done. But anyway, that's the Switch X build. Like I said, incredibly satisfying to play. And, you know, I really, I hope people see this and they're like, yo, Switch X is sexy because every time I play multiplayer, every lobby I'm in, I never see people using Switch Axe. 
and it makes me sad because it is such an incredibly powerful and satisfying weapon. Like, I mean, yeah, light bow going, yeah, we kill fast, but you just sit there and shoot. We just beat the shit out of this thing. Irrigante just got his ass whooped. So incredibly satisfying. Just, mm, extra spicy meatball perfection. So anyway, guys, that is going to wrap up this build video. I have a couple more builds in the works. The bow build is almost done. I have two different uh, dual blade builds, one that's focused around general use and one that is a themed build, which will be really cool to see. So anyway, thanks for watching. Let me know down in the comments below your thoughts of what you think about the Switch Axe, and we will see you guys with the next Monster Hunter World build video.